The challenge in a classroom like this, at least the one I'm in, is that many people come to the issues from, with different backgrounds. Um, some think that their background should be privileged in the discussions, while others should sort of take the back seat. If that persists in the classroom, then it's only a specific set of voices that will be heard all the time. I try to, I mean, I, in all these things I say I try because um, I'm, not, I'm not a model of perfection by any means. I try to get people to speak in class, even if they are reluctant to do it. I do not push them, I do not cold call for the most part. I just try to invite them to let me know what they are thinking. And I may ask that directly or indirectly. And some people appreciate that their voices are valued. I had a class once when a student Almost to the end of the quarter, I said, this was the first class she was taking that somebody actually asked what she thought. The student came to say that because of the experience in class. And one of the things I do is also to ensure that when they speak, that voice is not diminished. They do not feel that they are not valued in class. It's a combination of using small groups. For instance, I use small groups, ask them to respond to questions differently. And so, in some cases, the people who are not willing or who are not comfortable with sharing that are in the same group. So when they have to report back, one of them has to. Somehow they begin to gain that respect for their own voices and are sure that, oh, okay, yeah, what I know actually is correct. And if I don't know, I'm not put down before my colleagues and that kind of thing. Even if I disagree with the view that is offered, I just think that it's a different way of looking at it. It's not like it's wrong. And I let them know that, yeah, I, I have not thought about it that way. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just that I've never thought about it that way. And now you are inviting me to think about it differently, which I appreciate. So in all of those, I see that it's possible for people to then begin to say, oh, okay, I'm valued, I'm a precious part of this particular class. And I also occasionally I tell students that we're here together to do this. It's not a one-person show. It's just accident of circumstance that I'm in here and you are there. It could be reversed. And if it's reversed, that I expect my voice to be respected if I offer one. So all of those I try to balance and it's probably part of it the product of my own experience as a student because one, as an extremely introverted person, I, I will sit at the back of the class and I will sit behind somebody who is taller than me so that the professor will not see me and if I can't find that kind of seat, I will slide under the chair so that nobody will see me and if the professor's eyes are coming to my direction, I will look away and I know that some people are still like that. But here it is to learn and the topics are challenging enough. And we have to find ways of allowing people to speak, offer their voices. What we should avoid doing is to, to, to shut down those debates and to shut down those conversations, as difficult as they may be, because that's the reality of some people. Those difficult conversations, those difficult issues are the reality of some people. And we are just invited to think along with them and empathize in the journey and see if we can help them out of those situations in which they are.